Lift up your voices, let us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Bright burning sun with golden beams. Soft silver moon that gently gleams. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty I God, God, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my God. thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city, and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them. Those weeping as not weeping. Those rejoicing as not rejoicing. Those buying as not owning. Those using the world as not using it fully. 
For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. After Jesus had been arrested, Jesus came after John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. They abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little further, and he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then, they called, then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. After, Jesus, after John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, Galilee proclaiming the Gospel of God. This is a time of fulfillment. We enter into Jesus' public ministry here immediately after being tempted by the devil while in the desert for 40 days. As he begins his public ministry, as he begins his ministry, he begins to declare, this is the time of fulfillment. First, the beginning of Jesus' public ministry was historically speaking the time of fulfillment. In the new era of the gospel, the grace had just begun. But the time of fulfillment of which Jesus speaks also refers to each and every time we hear the gospel and we respond. We do this by sincerely repenting of our sins and by becoming a fuller member of God's kingdom. But ponder for a moment the specific word fulfillment. What does this mean? The word fulfillment can be contrast with the opposite unfulfilled. To be unfulfilled is always undesirable, right? In this world, many people find us unfulfilled and trying to fill the void with many different things. And interestingly, the three temptations that Jesus had experienced in the desert are among the temptations that were so many people giving during their search for fulfillment, right? First, Jesus was hungry. And so the de devil tempted him to turn the stone into bread to satisfy his hunger. This is a temptation of fleshly fulfillment. Second, the devil tempts Jesus to throw himself off of the pinnacle of the temple to prove he was the Son of God. And this is the temptation to fulfillment of pride. Pride to convince others of one's importance and identity. And third, the devil showed Jesus all the nations of the world and promised them to the Lord if Jesus worshipped him. This temptation to fulfillment by obtaining earthly wealth and power. Of course, Jesus reje rejects all three of these temptations as a way of showing that none of these truly fulfill our purpose. And he did this just prior to beginning his public ministry, so as then to go forth preaching the true message of fulfillment. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. True fulfillment is only found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The message of truth that Jesus shared during his three years of his public ministry and brought forth to completion by his sacrificial death on the cross and by his resurrection. Only those 
who heed his words and open themselves up to the grace that our Lord wants to pour forth to us from the cross are able to seek that fulfillment. And so today, reflect on your own interior desire of fulfillment in life. How do you try to satisfy that desire? Do you allow the evil one to allure you with his tricks into thinking that the fleshly desires, the pride or the wealth, are really the true answer here? If that's the case, then reject those temptations of our, you know, of the evil one, and allow our Lord to enter into your life, immerse yourself into the gospel message, and allow that conversion of heart to bring you to fulfillment in this life, especially as we desire and we pursue holiness. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, and all things were made, for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was the carnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning now, we let us place our prayers and petitions before our Heavenly Father that our Catholic Church and its leaders continue to guide us to Christ, especially in a world filled with distractions and temptations that pulls us away from the holy way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. That we may respond to God's call to be fishers of men and prayerfully work to promote and encourage vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, especially in our families. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, May those who wage war lay down their arms and choose a path to peace and reconciliation. May they recognize that the only true power comes from love and caring for others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering from illness, grief, poverty, or loneliness, may we recognize that God calls each of us to help others with our time, talent, and financial resources. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we place these prayers and petitions before your heavenly throne. If it be your will, answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread of life. We receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human, eye, human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Speak be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let's be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory of his name. 
for our good and good of all His Holy Church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sa- sancti- sanctifying them, grant that we may profit, they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and more move and have our very being. And while in this body we do not experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with the angels we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves. And all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Communion with those whose memory you venerate, especially the glories of our Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. Yes, that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flocks of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the Resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure and holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as ones you are pleased to accept, the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice, his spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Amid us, we beseech you into their company, not weigh in our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. prayer of spiritual communion for those unable to receive the Holy Eucharist at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that after receive, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. God's love is perfect, refreshing the soul, reviving. Spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. God's precepts keep us, the purpose is right. They gladden the hearts of people. God's command is so clear.